Hi everybody and welcome to the next match memories. Again, I always start these by thanking people for their kind messages and I do apologise that I don't get back to, to most of you. Um, but the messages are, you know, I do really appreciate them. Um, I think it goes right back to when I used to work in the tackle shop in Farnborough after school many, many years ago. And I just love, you know, the, the atmosphere in a tackle shop and the atmosphere, you know, when you're talking to other anglers about fishing, about your experiences, about their experiences, about tactics, about everything. I just love it. You know, I still work in the shop at Gold Valley Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and I just love talking to, you know, not only match anglers, but we get barbell anglers, carp anglers, pike anglers, lure anglers, all sorts. And I just love talking about fishing. So, you know, all your kind, kind messages are um, really, really appreciated. Um, and I'm just glad that you enjoy them, you know, as much as I enjoy actually doing them. Just a special mention, I've had a few letters over the last few weeks. Um, I just want to give Darren Wilton a little message just to say thank you very, very much for your kind, kind letter. Um, I'm glad that you're enjoying them. Um, and, and like I say, just, just thank you very much um, for everyone that's written to me um, and, and given me, you know, kind, encouraging messages. So anyway, that's enough of that. Back on to the important stuff, which is the fishing. Today's match memory, I'm going to go back to the first Fishermania final that I qualified for. I've been lucky enough to fish in three Fishermania finals. I've not won it yet, and stressed it yet, because hopefully it will happen. Um, I think I've had a second, a sixth, and a not very good. I think I beat one or two people um, when I just drew out of it at... Uh, Cudmore. But the year that I'm going to talk about is the first one I qualified for at Hayfield Lakes, a fantastic venue, absolutely love it. Um, the only thing I dislike about it is it's a little bit far away because I, I think I just want to fish there all the time. Very, very similar to Gold Valley, heavily stocked with big, big fish and just a beautiful place. The year's 2007 um, and I actually qualified at Larford Lakes fishing a big waggler, firing out ground bait. Um, during that time it was allowed there, it's not actually allowed at Larford now, the firing ground bait out, but you could virtually win from anywhere doing that. And I remember the day before was a match fishing cup, um, and I won the big lake that day, and I was ultra confident, and stayed on at Larford, um, stayed at Ben Leach's house funnily enough that night, um, went back to Larford the next day. And I didn't have a ticket and I managed to get one and I drew the next peg to where I'd won it the day before, believe it or not. When you're lux in, you're lux in. Carbon copy of the day before saw me win the match and qualify, like I say, for the 2007 final at Hayford. As you all know with Fishermania, um, uh, you are allowed a helper, um, helper stroke runner stroke eyes and ears on the bank. Um, and this year, uh, Paul Holland. Uh, came with me. We actually fished the Winter League final on the River Neen um, on the Sunday before and then me and Paul went up there and we just stayed there the week, practiced every day, took all the bait and everything with us, stayed in a lovely hotel around the corner. Um, I've known Paul since, you know, years and years ago and, you know, the reason I decided to take Paul, not only you know, is he a very, you know, probably one of the best, um, or one of the top three or four commercial anglers in the country. What a lot of people don't know about Paul is his actual background in fishing, what he's done, you know, right from bloodworm fishing, um, you know, back in the early 2000s, late 90s. Um, and he was winning matches, beating people like Steve Gardner on bloodworm, which, you know, is, <laughs> I've tried for years and I've hardly any, ever beat Stevie. But, you know, he, his background in angling, people don't realise sometimes, and that goes for a lot of anglers, but he's well adapted on rivers, um, like I say, bloodworm fishing, and now he's sort of turned his attention more focused towards the commercials. Um, and one of the reasons he's doing so well, I think, is because of, like I say, his background is in, and his experience, which we've spoke about in these before being very important. So that's a little bit of the reason why I decided to take Paul. Um, 
Now, to say that the venue changed from practice to the match would be an understatement. And what you've got to remember, for those of you in the know, um, we're on the small lake outside where the tackle shop is now at Hayfield. And the left-hand bank was just for cameras and a little bit of a grandstand, you know, where the cameras go and Keith and that are there talking. Um, so peg one and 16, only 16 in the final this year, but one and 16 had basically dominated the three or four finals before. I think Neil McKin, uh, Neil Machin had won it with, you know, close to 100 kilos the, the year before off peg one. It was one on peg 16, uh, the two years before that, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but I believe. Um, but I don't think there was a final there. Um, there might have been one or two that wasn't one on one of these end pegs. And they just seemed to dominate. Um, but, you know, you can't go into a match beaten before you start. Although, you know, I think everybody in that final was thinking, I want to draw one or 16, I want to draw one or 16. And everybody knew, I think, deep down that you probably wanted to be there. But, you know, me and Paul came up with some tactics. Um, worms was definitely the bait. Worms and casters. Baits like meat, corn and pellets didn't really seem to play a part. Um, but again, this is a few years ago. Um, probably just as pellets and that were getting a real foothold in commercial fishing. But... We came up with a couple of tactics. Now, the lake is quite deep, you know, 10 to 12 foot on the pole. Um, and the one advantage you had on these two MPEGs was you had a margin swim. You know, there were no blockers. You could fish up to the virtually the next peg or a long way away, away from the crowds, away from the disturbance. Um, you know, and, and I think that's why they sort of dominated. I actually drew peg 14 on the match and you've got someone literally like, 10 meters either side of you um but anyway a little bit more on the practice so obviously long pole shallow was really good loose feeding casters making up like a worm and caster slop i used a lot of predator plus then um with my worm mix which just made like a lingering red cloud and in practice that was good and you could catch on the bottom over that with a whole worm you know size 12 hook gram float because of the depth uh, again, black hydro, white hydro, shallow because there was some big off, and it was just brilliant. You know, you're catching loads of fish, and didn't really practice the margins because, again, you know, with my experience in commercial fishing, I feel like if I get on a on a you know a match winning margin peg, you know, probably make the most of it. I've got all the gear right, and I've done a lot of it. Um, so I didn't want to waste time, you know, practicing those pegs and just catching loads up the edge. So I turned my attention more, you know, to to the, you know, the chances of drawing an end are quite slim. So I wanted to find out how to try and compete from one of these middle pegs. Now, a big feeder full of worm and casters cast about 30 metres out. Um, double worm on the hook again, just caught loads of fish and you were just casting in and out, in and out, in and out. A method we, we used to use a lot at, at Gold Valley, um, used to call it the speed feeder, because literally you chuck it out, you count to 50, wind it in, chuck it out, count to 50, wind in, and just repeat this process, and you ended up putting loads and loads of bait in and getting a lot of fish in your peg. And this did work on, on, on this particular venue. So going into the final, I was ultimately, you know, just so confident. And I can remember Paul saying, you know, like, no one else has practiced this feeder and the plan was to go there and really dominate it be positive on the pole loose feeding potting worms and casters a little bit of sweet corn as well um and just really try and make this feeder work you know even if you didn't catch on it early just try and make it work keep casting keep casting bait 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 dominate and that's a very very important thing to be able to do in match fishing to dominate your area and you might have noticed that I've spoken a little bit on these about fishing further. Um, you know, it, it, to, to dominate an area, fishing further and feeding more is the way to do it. And that's how a lot of these top match anglers, you know, sort of get their edges and that. You know, 
dominating with bait is a is a massive massive thing obviously there's bait limits but you can again this is where your match plan comes into it if it's an eight point limit you might start off gently gently just like catching a few fish saving your bait for when a lot of people are running out and if you've got more you can attack it you get more fish in your peg so you can see the sort of thinking when i'm talking about dominating your area so the match came along like i said drew peg 14 um and now by this stage i'd fished you know probably fished seven or eight world championships um i'd fished 2000 in paris where there's massive crowds but they're a long way away from you and i can remember setting up on the match and you know like you're in the zone you're just concentrating purely on on, on the fishing um and Paul, I look around at Paul and I'm like, are you all right? And he was just sat there like, and I'm like, Paul, you okay? He's like, have you looked behind us? And I like looked and it was like a football crowd. It was like, oh my God. And they're not like in a world championships where they'd be maybe 20 meters behind you. They're like 10 meters behind you. You could almost feel like the, the presence of them behind you. And it's like, oh no, you know, like, so anyway, the match started three or four big pot falls of bait in on the pole again i'm not there to come you know to to look nice and do okay i'm there to try and win a lot of money to be won back then twenty five thousand pound for the winner five thousand pound for the biggest fish now there's a guy called clive wright who's very very good commercial angler drawn peg 16 and he was always going to be a danger but the match started and it was like literally after 40 minutes i think i'd caught a tench on the feeder and the guys either side of me hadn't caught and no one had really caught um and it was like what's happened you know and it got to the stage on the feeder where it was just like literally you're just flogging a dead horse just nothing's happening so I thought, right we've been loose feeding i go shallow on the pole there's these big eyed and odd carp shallow and one thing i haven't mentioned is when i talk about shallow i did mention that the lake's deep and when you catch shallow there it's normally like three to four foot you know not a foot like it is on a lot of commercials they're that little bit deeper purely because they got that volume of water to come up and down in so fishing like three or four foot again casey carper rock float uh cube float one of my favorites you might have heard me mention that float um that i used in the international fisher mania at cubmore and again went on it can't get a bite now Having been involved in a few of these big matches, you know, the crowd, the pressure, um, the movement on the bank, you've got the cameras, you've got everything. It can have funny effects on these lakes. You know, I've since been in other finals and it's the same. You can catch certain ways in practice and in open matches. And yet you come the day and, and Hayfield seemed to be affected at the time. You know, you, you just couldn't catch fish shallow. You know, you could catch odd fish in the edge if you were on the end, obviously. And then it was on the bottom. So I changed the fishing on the bottom, conventional style. You know, a bit of line on the bottom, fishing two pieces of worm or a whole dendra. Nice big thick top gram float. Um, it saw me start to catch a few fish. I caught an odd carp. I caught a big bream, as I remember as well. Um, and Paul was like, you know, like you, you, you're doing all right. And, and did a fantastic job, Paul. But as what happens on a lot of commercials, as you start to get into the second half of the match, things start to develop. And this is why you can never really count your chickens in match fishing, especially commercial fishing. Because the fish are so big, they can come in in large, large numbers and things can be flipped on their head. Again, you heard what happened when me and Alan were miles behind at um, Cubmore on the International we managed to pull it back and win by over 10 kilos and it just goes to show these big double figure fish and the gear we've got now you know when you've got gear at your disposal like you know for me my normal edge fishing would be you know red or purple hydro um, 022, 024 tournament rig line straight through to a 10 or a 12 gamma power or even a gamma carp hook you know, you, you can catch these big fish quick. You know, you catch 10 fish an hour, no problem. And that could be well over £100. So like I say, going into the last half of the match, I saw Clive Wright go up towards the edge. And on peg 16, he had a bit of a pipe and a bush, and it just looked nice, and the crowd was kept back. 
and bang, he's got one. And it's like, oh, no. then he's got another one. And, you know, he, he, he was catching and, and I'd caught a decent one on the pole. I think it was about 10 or 11 pound. Um, and at one stage, he'd sort of crept up and was just in front of me. And then I'd caught one, then he'd catch one, then I'd catch one, he'd catch one. And, and it, it, nobody else was really in the race. The lad on peg one didn't seem to be catching. Um, no one was really catching. The guys either side of me, um, you know, they, they, you know, literally one fish. I think the guy on my left caught one fish and that was like right at the end. But again, because I dominated that area, I'd got what fish are there, which wasn't many, but they were in my peg. They weren't, you know, in my competitor's peg. I'd fish slightly further, 14 and a half metres. Um, as I remember, my peg was slightly further out than the two either side of me, which is always an advantage, a massive, massive advantage when these fish are hard to catch. But like I say, I started to, to, to catch a few fish, but it was noticeable that Clive's peg on the end was getting better and better and better. So, you know, it's uh, like I said in match fishing, you can never tell. You know, I've been in front in matches with an hour and a half to go, sat there thinking all smug, you know, who's going to come second and you end up coming fourth or fifth yourself because people have gone down the edge and caught. You've gone down the edge and haven't caught. Likewise, I've been in the position where hour or two hours to go, you know, you sat there thinking, well, I've got no chance today and you go down the edge and you end up winning the match. Again, always gear up for those big fish down the edge. You know, you can catch them ever so quick. And it's pointless playing them forever and ever and ever. And when they come in, they generally come in to eat. And when they're coming to eat, they're aggressive. Things like size 12, 10 hooks and 020, 022, 024 line and red hydro, purple hydros. Really accepted. You know, they you will catch them on it and you will catch them quick. So anyway, going back to, to the fish show final. I feel like I fished a really nice match. I think I ended up with just over, just under 35 kilos. Um, and Clive managed to catch 50. Obviously, Clive won the match. Um, I was second. And it was a bit of a funny feeling, really, because um, you feel like you've done well. And it's very important to me. I'm a very, very proud person as far as, you know, when I'm talking about fishing, I'm proud of you know my you know my reputation what people think um you know to a certain extent um but you know impressing the crowd putting on a good show talking to the crowd afterwards making new friends seeing what they thought you know i love all that i love on the all the internationals i fished and the and the fisher manias it's nice just to have a chat with the people that are behind you and ask them you know what you think and you know it, it was just fantastic, but I think the writing was on the wall. Um, and, you know, I can sort of remember I had an earpiece in with an hour and a half to go. And I, I, Tom Pickering was in the in the, um, in the the studio uh, with Keith. Uh, fantastic angler, Tom. Um, again, experience. I talk about experience and, you know, it's so, so important. And I can remember Tom saying to me over the thing, you know, like, you're going to have a job catching Clive now, you know, like, there's a lot of fish. And they could obviously see from the cameras that there was lots of fish moving there. Um, but it, it did get to the stage towards the end of the match where you're almost like, well, I'm going to be second, you know. But I had this, I've got the biggest fish. You know, I've caught a £10, a £5,000, that's handy. Because if you, if you don't win it or win the biggest fish, you go home with nothing, nothing at all. Um, you obviously got £500 when you qualify, so that sort of paid for the week's practice for me and Paul. Went a little bit away to, to, to pay the bait bill, but we did take quite a few worms that week, so I think it was uh, the worm bill alone was probably more than that. Um, but a fantastic experience, even though I was second, and lo and behold, Clive Wright's second to last fish was three ounces bigger than mine. So... It was nice for Clive to walk away with a £25,000 winner's cheque and the £5,000 um, biggest fish. Um, it wasn't so good for me when, you know, because all match I'm thinking, oh, well, you know, like if he does overtake me, £5,000, nothing to be sniffed at. You know, like that'll do me. That more than pays for it. I've come second. You know, the crowd behind me has been fantastic. That's the lovely thing. 
is I've fished all over the all over Europe and there's very very few instances in the crowd where people have been you know there was one time on one match where i was right behind the beer tent and nothing to do with the fishing but things did get a bit loud and a bit you know like irate behind me and and the stewards had to like sort of try and quieten everything down um but all in all fishing crowds what you find with fishing crowds is because they're all very good knowledgeable experienced anglers they you know they tend to show respect to everyone that's fishing they keep quiet they're talking about fishing um you know and and this particular year was fantastic because you know i said to paul and even driving out of the complex it's like i, I stopped and you could virtually stop behind the peg where me and paul were and i virtually stopped and i said i know we haven't won anything but what a fantastic week we've had what a brilliant day today's been you know the sky cameras the crowd the hospitality at hayfield it's just you, you know robert and Noli, it's just yeah, robin and um Noli, it's just fantastic you know i love the place and i've been back there since can't wait to go back um and it is the style of fishing that suits me you know i'm, I'm adapted at fishing for f1s and obviously Fishing away from commercial fisheries is, is, is more what I do. But the carp side of it, the big carp, um, you know, that's what I really do like. And hopefully I will be back there on some big finals. So, like I say, well done to Clive Wright. Absolutely fantastic, you know, performance. You know, you can only win when you draw one of the best pegs. And that's what he did. A lot of people crumble under pressure. But Clive kept his call. Um, and, and like I say, won the match, and that's all you can do. For myself, fishing, finishing second, just happy with that. Um, and that sort of lit the fire for me with the Fishermania and these other big finals. Um, you know, it when you get in that environment, for those of you that have been lucky enough to qualify, and those of you that have been and watched, it's such a nice environment. And if you like pressure and thrive on it like I do, that's where you want to be, you know. That's where you want to be in front of the cameras, in front of the crowds, and you want to be doing what you do best, which is fishing. So, like I say, I hope you're all catching loads of fish. Something a little bit different there, a different match. Um, I'm thinking of doing another World Championships next week. Um, a real interesting one, this one. But I'm going to keep that one under my hat. So, something for you to look forward to. If you're out this weekend, good luck if you're on matches. If not, Again, I've been out on the lakes this morning. Um, I was at Old Berry Hill Monday fishing. Fantastic. Caught loads and loads of bream filming with the Darwell cameras. Again, like I say, a little bit of informational um, stuff that we've done on the ground baits and the new rods and this, that and the other. Um, really, really enjoying my fishing at the moment. I'm off to Larford Saturday for a Golden Reel qualifier, so can't wait for that. And I might well go on a little open that's on the Thames on Sunday just to keep my hand in at that river fishing so like I say if you're out this weekend look for that southwesterly again it changes all the time on my phone but apparently there's going to be quite a good southwesterly um, especially Sunday so if you're not on a match and you can pick where you're going definitely have a look for those corners of the lake um, or the end of the lake where the wind's blowing could be a little bit of scum there's a lot of algae on some lakes and weed that's dying off at the moment and if that scum drifts in wind end there could be a lot of fish under there so bear that in mind and if you are on matches good luck with the draw um a lot of matches at the moment being one on the ends just purely because of the massive weights and that little bit of room you tend to get a few more fish but wherever you draw wherever you go have a fantastic time and good luck and i'll talk to you soon bye bye